people are transforming into all kinds of things on this channel. So let's take a look at one more. Let's speculate on the biology of turning red. Hello everyone! Turning Red is a 2022 animated movie about a girl that turns into a huge red panda. And if you've been following this channel, you should know just how much fun we have with things transforming over here. This episode, by the way, was commissioned by Alec Foisy, so huge thanks for that. And you, please consider pandering to the algorithm by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Today is a special day for this center. While most of our studies focus on wildlife and the ecosystem, there are times when we can more directly use our facilities for the betterment of mankind, such as when we look into diseases and disorders that may affect the population. And today we've been given an opportunity to research Sanji syndrome, thanks to the collaboration of the family of an afflicted individual. This is also known colloquially as the red panda disease, for reasons that will become apparent as the disorder progresses. This is an extremely rare disease, with almost all known cases dating back to ancient China and belonging to a single family, with information on it being too sparse to know what to work off of beyond a few things. One of these sparse facts is that this illness has exclusively affected people with two X chromosomes, which is likely tied to genetic factors, indicating the defective gene that produces this disorder is found exclusively in the X chromosome, with two deficient chromosomes being needed for the illness to manifest, meaning a healthy allele in an X or Y chromosome will cover for the deficient allele just fine. This disease is first manifested during puberty, owing to the hormonal shifts that take place at this time. The hormonal profile and medical history of the patient indicate a severe imbalance having occurred not long before she was brought to us, and it is likely that said imbalance is what precipitates the symptoms associated with the disease. As a result of this initial imbalance, the first, very subtle symptoms will include an increase in irritability, as well as a heightened emotional response. Sadly, many times across history, these signs were mischaracterized as simply being a result of puberty, a stereotype that would prevent the afflicted individual from being helped in time. The emotional instability seen in this initial phase will eventually develop into greatly increased aggression which our on-site mental health staff determined as being disproportional to the situation that caused it. Personally, though, I wouldn't blame any kind of response on a girl forced to undergo this entire ordeal. While this disease is still relatively unknown to science and no medical treatment has been developed, we have been informed that traditional medicine and therapy have often been used to treat and even reverse these symptoms by attempting to correct this hormonal imbalance before the onset of the symptomatic phase. Psychological testing of the patient has yielded results consistent with those seen in stressful environments, which track with the current situation the patient is undergoing. However, we hope magnetic resonance imaging may shed more light on the underlying cause of these symptoms. MRI will have to wait for the time being, since more pressing developments have taken place. We did not expect the disease to develop so quickly, and with any luck, this could have been entirely avoided but it seems the patient was not as careful as she should have been with her treatment. As a result, in a few days since her last visit, the patient has begun showing a marked hair discoloration, with the hair that has grown since the initial symptoms presenting a distinctive red tinge. This type of discoloration is commonly seen as a side effect of malnutrition, yet it seems the patient shows no alterations to her dietary intake 
thus hinting at the fact that the effects of this disorder prevent her body from absorbing or properly utilizing the nutrients she is obtaining from food, a common side effect of many similar disorders. While still at an early stage, the patient seems to be experiencing excessive growth of body hair, similar to that observed in patients suffering from hypertrichosis, which is also a common side effect of hormonal imbalances such as that seen in our patient. Due to the aforementioned effects of malnutrition, most of this hair will be reddish and dry, especially along the head and torso, appearing bushy due to its damaged texture. While this hair will cover most of the body, some parts of the face are noticeably lacking in hair growth, presenting little to no hair around the eyes, nose and mouth, while the hair of certain areas, particularly the head and pelvic region, will be even more noticeable. While the symptoms of this phase are already noticeable, the following phase of the disease has already begun manifesting itself. Pre-existent records of this, as well as living members of the patient's family, attest to the full extent of the bodily modifications undergone by anyone suffering from this disease. However, we were not prepared to witness it in real time. As shown in the following diagrams, the patient initiated an abnormal, highly accelerated period of growth across a couple of years after the first stages of the disease. The patient grew to almost 2 meters or 6.5 feet in length and accumulated a good deal of fat and muscle severely altering her dietary requirements and heavily impacting her joints and colon, for which further treatment may be needed in the future. This growth, however, was not even, unlike would be expected in a healthy teenager. Rather, her torso grew at a much faster rate than her limbs, creating the profile we are seeing in the end of the growth period. Furthermore, we also observed constant and excessive shedding of skin tissue, with dead skin cells being knocked loose by sudden movements. The entire process took long enough, but in the meantime, we were able to do a few studies regarding the nature of this disease. X-rays and MRI confirmed this was due to hyperplasia of the pituitary gland, which controls not only body growth, but also hormone release thus explaining the hormonal imbalance that took place at the beginning of the symptomatic phase. This hyperplasia in the pituitary gland seems to be the main factor behind most symptoms observed. And indeed, this process placed a lot of pressure in the surrounding tissues, particularly the amygdala, the zone that controls, for example, fear and aggression, thus explaining the initial responses observed. And, Thanks to monthly blood tests, we are now certain that the patient's hormone profile has stabilized. Not to normal levels, but, well, it is not changing anymore at least. And current treatment may allow the patient to regain at least some comfort in her life. <sighs> as fascinating as these discoveries are, however, it is never easy seeing the effect such disorders can have on people. The cost such a situation can have on a person cannot be understated. Just to think of what that poor girl must be going through. She... Uh, is she... Is she giggling and taking selfies with the staff? And that's it for speculative biology look into the turning red panda thingy. Now, in this channel we've seen some really funky diseases. Werewolves, Gorefield, Vampires, Titans, and all of these tend to play up the horror and human tragedy that comes along with losing oneself to such a disease. This one was close to being the same, but I felt a little twist at the end could help play closer to the actual tone of the movie. I can definitely imagine this particular individual living her best life as a huge red panda thing. 
As for the actual process, upon researching all of the possible ways the transformation could have translated into symptoms of a disease, we were surprised to see just how much of it not only was possible, but was actually tied to just a few underlying causes, and which, sadly, also have parallels in real-life diseases and disorders. Although I did decide against showing examples out of respect to those suffering them, especially in the context of a silly video about turning red. I hope y'all had fun with this episode, because we for sure had a ton of fun making it. As always, here's a big thank you to everyone who wanted to see this episode. And also, thank you to our researchers and research associates who support us through Patreon and YouTube memberships. And once again, to Alec for commissioning and working with me on this app. Remember, you too can join in if you want to support our channel. And you get some nice perks too, like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. Or you can also like, subscribe, or write a comment telling me any type of creature you would like me to give the speckybo treatment in the show. Any of those really help the channel a lot. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.